I'm Jody Avergan. Have you heard of Blue Apron? Well, now you have. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. The country's number one fresh ingredient and recipe service, fresh, high-quality ingredients make the difference, so it's important to know where your food comes from. Plus, it's affordable, easy, and full of surprises. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping. You will love how good it tastes and feels to create home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. Go to blueapron.com slash 30 for 30. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hour number two. The Stephen A. Smith Show here with you. For the next hour over the airways of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 80. By the way, guys, Christmas is coming. This year, go with the win-win. Give us something that will make her feel hot and heat up your holiday. The super warm, world-famous hoodie footy by Pajama Graham. Because let's face it, it's hard to be hot when she's freezing cold. The hoodie footy is the ultimate solution because it combines the warmth of a hoodie with the coziness of a footy pajama. Head to toe warmth means she'll be cozy in no time. You can find all hoodie footy styles at pajamagram.com. Each hoodie footy has a drawstring hood and a full zip front. Imagine getting to open that, especially if you opt for the sweet and sexy gift set. Includes a hoodie footy and sexy midnight fantasy. Buy both today at pajamagram.com and save $40. You don't have to wrap because every pajamagram includes free gift packing. Christmas delivery is guaranteed as well. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. That's 1-800-GIVE-PJ-APOSTROPHE-S. And by the way, tell them Stephen A. sent you. 866 is 866-SAY-ESPN. Listen, what I'm trying to say to you in regards to the whole Kaepernick thing, the protests were never about disrespecting the American flag and certainly not disrespecting our servicemen and women. Folks tried to turn it into that, and the president came in and hijacked the entire issue because he had a personal vendetta to exercise against NFL owners who didn't let him into their good old boys club back in 2014. And his constituency or he his constituents boarded hook, line, and sinker. And so they changed the protest against inequality and racial oppression and brutality on the part of law enforcement officials into something entirely different. They hijacked the issue and they did it successfully. That's what they did. But in the process of all of that, it doesn't take away from the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is there's a reality that has to be adopted when it comes to Colin Kaepernick, regardless of what his intent was. The fruition, the results of his actions speak for themselves. There's no way in hell that there are 32 quarterbacks in the National Football League as starters better than Colin Kaepernick. Damn sure ain't 64 of them. Another additional 32 backing up the starters. They wouldn't let him back in the league. And if they didn't let him back into the league as a player, what in God's name name make you think? They're going to let him in as a part owner. And let's be also, let's be mindful of something too. I don't give a damn how successful Colin Kaepernick was. He ain't worth close to what P Diddy or Jay Z's worth. Can we stop this nonsense? If you let him in, it's a figurehead. He ain't got hundreds of millions of dollars to invest. He don't have that kind of backing. So if you brought him in, It would be a figurehead and it would be to represent a movement that would assuage and appease minority communities throughout this nation. But NFL owners don't have to capitulate to that. That's the reality. It ain't popular to say, but it's true. And I believe even talking about it, if you're P. Diddy or or Jay-Z or anybody else that potentially may want to buy an NFL franchise, even talking about Colin Kaepernick puts up a roadblock, an impediment to such a successful venture that you don't need to entertain. 
And by the way, I'll go a step further. Colin Kaepernick shouldn't even tweet about it. Colin Kaepernick shouldn't even talk about it. Because if Colin Kaepernick truly wants that level of progress to reach fruition, he'll be quiet. He knows good and damn well these owners ain't going to let him in. So why would you want to bring attention to yourself wanting to be a part of an ownership group? Unless your quest is to be that divisive. And I'm not saying it would be wrong for him based on his original intent. But in this particular situation, if he truly believes that P. Diddy has an opportunity to own an NFL franchise, you got to know if you Colin Kaepernick, you need to shut the hell up. You don't need to say anything. Because you can only serve as an impediment to such a, such a successful venture. You got to know that if you're him. You have to know that. Contrary to what others try and say, I've never had a damn thing against Colin Kaepernick. I've completely supported him other than when he advertised the fact that he didn't vote. Even though that's not a move I would make in terms of not voting, I respect his right not to vote. My issue with him was advertising it to the world. No, I don't vote. I'm not voting for either candidate, blah, 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 blah. We saw in Alabama and various other places, in Georgia as well, with Miss Bottoms and others, that voting is impactful. It can make a difference. It is the number one instrument for change other than dollars that we have available to us as American citizens in the United States of America. Shame on anybody who encourages people not to vote. Shame on anybody who takes that position. You don't want to do it yourself or you can't do it yourself. I understand. But to encourage others, particularly a nation of our youth, not to vote is as egregious as it gets. And I'll never support that. But if you're Colin Kaepernick. And you truly, truly believe. That P. Diddy has a chance. Or any other African-American out there has a chance to actually own an NFL franchise. Then it would behoove you to be quiet and lay low. Because it would improve his chances. If you're really sincere, be quiet. Disappear. Don't tweet. Don't talk about, let's get it together. Let me, let me in. Let's get it together. Stop. When you know good and damn well, they'll never let you in. The NFL is a private entity. The owners do not have to let him in. They didn't let Donald Trump in. And until his comments against the league, hell, he was one of them. They didn't let him in. So why would they let Colin Kaepernick? 866-729-3776. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. Back to your calls in a minute. Right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio. Want to be a part of the show? Hit Stephen A. up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I've never felt more alive. Disclaimer, GEICO cannot guarantee you will feel more alive. You either possess functioning respiratory and circulatory systems, or you do not, or you are a zombie. If you are indeed a brain-starved zombie and you would like to save money on car insurance, the GEICO legal team applauds your excellent life choices, even in your shambling afterlife. But we strongly encourage you to visit GEICO.com or download the GEICO app. Please stay a minimum of 500 feet away from our large and presumably delicious, delicious brains. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Let's see. Let's go to John in Manhattan. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, man. Hey, Stephen. Happy holidays to you. Happy holidays. Go ahead, buddy. Hey, listen, the thing is, you didn't have to explain to me why why Colin Cabot should have been mentioned. When I heard on the news, I said, don't shoot yourself in the foot before you get out of the gate. You know what you're dealing with, so why even mention him? It's, it, it didn't make any sense. Yeah, he needs to be quiet. He needs to be quiet. Yeah. If he truly, if he's truly interested in a minority owning an NFL team, he doesn't need to want to be a part of it. And, 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 and listen, and may I say something that's very, very unpopular? Sure. If I am a white billionaire 
NFL owner. I don't want to deal with Colin Kaepernick. You didn't want to. Well, it's the, it's the, I'm, the, the, I'm, I'm at, I, at the I, you. You got to remember me. You, you know, uh, you, me, uh, black men. Sure. I don't have a problem. Then listen, a lot of white guys, a lot of Hispanic guys and others, you know, you don't have no problem with Colin Kaepernick. But if you are an owner in the National Football League, I don't want Colin Kaepernick in my ownership group. I no. wouldn't approve that. I would no. not approve that at all because you don't care about the bottom line. You care about your issues, which from a humane perspective it's not only allowable, it's understandable and downright applaudable in some respects. No, it's not applaudable. You don't applaud him wearing a Fidel Castro T-shirt. You don't applaud him wearing pigs on his socks, you know, to, to, to depict law enforcement officials. You don't support his girlfriend tweeting, you know, comparing Ray Lewis and Steve Bashotti for the Baltimore Ravens to Leonardo DiCaprio and Samuel L. Jackson's uh, characters in the movie Django. No, you do not support that. But I do support somebody fighting for racial equality uh, uh, against a law enforcement uh, abuse against various communities. If that's how you feel about it, uh, civil rights and things. Like that. I support that. But guess what? If I'm an owner for the National Football League, particularly one who happens to be white and distant from that, I'm not supporting him being a part of that ownership group. I don't want that problem. No, let's just call it what it is. You're right. Appreciate the call, man. Take it easy. Thank you for the call. 866-729-3776. Let's just call it what it is. Let's just be honest. No way around that. Nobody's obligated to support Colin Kaepernick. I support his causes. I don't support every little thing that he did in going about highlighting those causes. You got people that's going to get all emotional and everything and act like everything he do is right because you believe in his overall message. Well, sometimes your overall message can get diluted by how you conduct yourself in conveying and disseminating that message. If we're being honest about it, and I'll be damned if I'm going to lie about it. Carlton in Tampa, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Yes, Stephen A. How to torch African American ownership? Let's let's include the guy who called one of the thirty guys that votes on this, or, or equated one of the thirty guys that votes on us on this to a vile slave owner. Okay, yeah, that's that's brilliant. Uh, that's brilliant strategy there in terms of trying to get yeah. African American ownership in the NFL. You're right. You're right. That, absolutely brilliant. But I wanted to talk about your take on Alex Guerrero on first take this morning. Are you out of your mind, my friend? Do you know over 30 of the Patriots players were going to see this guy? 30, more than half the team. And this guy is the fraud doctor. I mean, he, he actually created fake studies that he'd cured almost 200 terminally ill cancer pa patients with his supreme greens. He said it was perfectly safe for infants to use, pregnant women to use, anybody on any medication. And now the Patriots training staff is in up in arms because they're, he is contradicting the things that they're telling players to do to get to recover from injuries or whatever. And you think it's a good idea keeping this guy around? Well, you're not, you're, you're misrepresenting my point with all due respect, Carlton. Uh, here was my position. I wasn't even getting into the minutia of all of that. What I, because Max had done all of that already and I understood it. What I was saying is he had been around for quite some time. Whatever problems you have with him, you had with him. So no, what he was he? Cause, so, no, because he was only with Brady, Stephen A. Now no, he's no, got thirty no, no, players. No, no, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Nonsense. But that's not. But that's not new. He had players yes, it is. coming. It is no, new. More and more guys every year are going to. No, this no, guy. no, 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 Carlton. You're not listening. This is the Stephen A. Smith show. You do have to listen to what I have to say. What okay, I am but saying. I want to correct you if you say something I, I, wrong. Yeah, but but yeah, but you have to let me finish first. Okay, go ahead. Here's the deal. What I'm saying is I wasn't disputing that. I'm saying that over the last several years, Brady wasn't the only one he was treating, A, and B, the numerous other players that he was treating. You still heard some of these, as Max would say this morning, quackery stuff that he was disseminating. They were aware of it. So my position wasn't about all of that. It's about 
Why are you taking this position now? Why haven't you done this before? And if you haven't done it before, what's the urgency at this particular moment, week 14, 15 of the NFL season in pursuit of another Super Bowl? Suddenly you make this move. What has happened? That was my issue. I wasn't questioning Guerrero, the legitimacy of what Max has said. Guerrero is causing chaos with the training, with the training staff. In other words, he's contradicting more and more what they tell players to do. And, and that's, you know, that's the issue. They never should have let this guy in the building. Well, that the, but see, but see, wait a minute, job. wait a minute. Nobody's making, because you're the only one that's making that argument. Like they never should have let this guy in the building. Now I can agree with that, but my point is Carlton, I'm listening to a guy, Carlton from Tampa, who used to be Carlton in Massachusetts, who is the, is the renowned Patriot hater. You're no, question- Belichick, Belichick Listen, hater, Stephen. Right, Belichick, Belichick hater, hater not Belichick Patriot. hater, but you question everything about this organization because Belichick reigns over it. So with that in mind, these same trainers that he's coming to the defense of, these are individuals that you felt were suspect to begin with with no, anything no, when it comes to the Patriots. No, no problem with the training staff. No, no problem you, with the training staff. You've never, you oh. never, you never, I'm not saying that you conveyed something about them directly. What I'm saying is you have a question mark and a level of skepticism attached to anything that Bill Belichick has dominion over. Well, this guy, he doesn't, whereas the trainers who were complaining about him, he does have dominion over them. So your argument seems a bit inconsistent in that regard. Have you ever heard of the fable or the parable, the uh, frog and the scorpion, Stephen A.? I've heard of it, but go ahead. Okay. You know, a scorpion asks a frog to give him a lift across the river on his back, and the frog goes, no way, you'll sting me and I'll die. And the scorpion goes, no, of course I won't do that. I'll drown too if I do that. So the frog eventually acquiesces and says, all right, I'll give you a ride. They get out into the middle of the river. The, the scorpion stings the frog, and as they're both going down and drowning, the, the frog goes, well, why did you do that? Now we're both going to die. And the scorpion says, it's in my nature. Alex Guerrero's nature, he's a bad dude. They never should have let him in the training room. And just like with the NFL, the NFL should have put the handcuffs on Bill back in 2007. They didn't, and they wound up with the flake gate. It's in his nature, Stephen A. You don't allow folks like that to get inside your well, let me Again, you still haven't asked my question, answered this, answered this question, Carlton. Based on what you're saying you feel about Alex Guerrero, fair enough. What I'm asking you is he doesn't have dominion over that guy that he let in to the facility, but he does have dominion over those other trainers. And since you question all things Bill Belichick, how do you feel about those trainers who were complaining about Alex Guerrero considering the fact that they're beholden to Bill Belichick? Well, no. I, hey, look it. I know of no major improprieties in the Patriots training staff. I know Alex Guerrero, he is a, he's the fraud doctor. He claimed to have a medical license. He doesn't. He attended a defunct university in Southern California, Samurai University. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. He, didn't know that. he, pitched, he pitched fraudulent studies, said that he had done you know, studies and cured hundreds of people of terminal cancer to make money on his infamous. He's been sanctioned by the FDC. He was sanctioned for Supreme Greens. Then he came so, back so, with his so, TV so last brain question. one. So last, question to water you. So, last, so last question to you. Why are we talking about Bill Belichick when we, and, and letting him in in the first place when we should be talking about the guy who swears by him, which is Tom Brady? That was Bill's mistake because Tom had a lot of cachet there. Bill made the but mistake. Why are we not talking about Tom Brady right now? Tom wanted it. Why are we not talking about Tom Brady right now? Tom Brady still swears by him. Tom's been duped by the guy. Or maybe some of it works for Tom and Tom's willing to overlook the guy. This guy is a complete fraud. Okay. All right. I still said, I still asked the question. Why are we not talking about Tom Brady? You're saying we should probably talk a little bit more about why on God's green earth has Tom tied his business fortunes to this guy. That's right. That, and that's a different discussion. I appreciate the call, Carlton. Thank you so much. 866 say ESPN. Back with your calls and more in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A Smith Show podcast. Damn it. I mean it. One minute. Past hour number two back here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, 866-ESPN is always the number to call. It's 866-729-3776. News circulated a few hours ago that Floyd, Money, Mayweather, 50-0, and 0, 
uh, pound for pound, best fighter in the world in a lot of people's eyes, at least until the last couple of fights, uh, retired after beating up Conor McGregor uh, this past August. Well, in case you uh, haven't heard the news, there's some reports circulating that Floyd Money Mayweather is about to make a deal with the UFC. Dana White is on the record saying they've been talking to Floyd Money Mayweather. Floyd Money Mayweather might go into the UFC, et cetera, et cetera. Just so you all know, Floyd Mayweather has repeatedly told me he will never fight again, that he's retired, he's done. Dana White says otherwise. Floyd was quoted publicly talking to somebody. I think it's boxing hype. I'm not sure. Please don't quote me on that. But he was talking to somebody saying that, you know, the UFC has been talking to him. He can make a billion dollars for four UFC fights. Blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you this. I don't believe for one second that Floyd is going to fight in the UFC. I have spoken to members of Floyd Money Mayweather's camp this morning. They said there is no truth to the stories whatsoever that he ain't fighting in the UFC. He swears he's retired, but even if he were to unretire, it would never be to be an MMA fighter. Now, if UFC is about to get into the boxing business where you've got guys who will box but not necessarily do MMA, you know, then that's different. But I'm willing to bet anything that Floyd Money Mayweather will never go into an octagon as an MMA fighter. His hands are already brittle. He's never kicked. He doesn't know martial arts. I can't see it. I, it's unimaginable. Unimaginable. Not to mention the fact he'd get destroyed because he's not an MMA fighter. It's just that simple. But I thought I'd point that out. Make sure I got that out for the public. I spoke to them directly. They said there's no truth to the stories. 866-729-3776. Let's go back to the phones. Ross in Long Island. You're live with Stephen. Hey, what's up? Hey, good afternoon. I, I am, uh, was going to talk KP, but actually, Steve, you made a lot of sense uh, regarding the Sean Buffy Combs uh, city and, uh, and the situation with uh, Colin Kaepernick wanting to join the ownership group. And I'll make this quick for you, and I think I can summarize what you said, but I'm not going to pretend that what you're saying isn't true. Okay, while I feel and while my family and while my friends feel that black owners need more presence in sports ownership, I am not naive to think that the club you speak of will be accepting of Colin K. They just will not. And if these are Sean's intentions or his who he puts together to own a, a team that is freaking awesome, Mr. Combs has to know that he cannot have his cake and eat it too. You cannot own an NFL team, Sean, and then make a cultural statement simultaneously. It's just not the way the world works. Like you pointed out, Stephen, you just well, can't have both. Well, Ross, I'll go yeah? a step further. I'll go a step further. If he owns a team, there's no other cultural statement he needs to make. By virtue well, of him pulling off ownership, that in itself is a cultural statement, a profound one. He would be the you first know, African-American to own an NFL franchise. You know what's funny, Stephen? You know what would be interesting? If Sean did this and he went by himself and went ahead and with a bunch of other crews and he, and he were to own the Carolina Panthers, who's to say that in two, three years he couldn't even employ, he, he couldn't employ Colin? He, he could still well, have well, Colin well, there. He just has to wait. Well, listen, the, just not uh, as an owner, just not as an owner. But not only that, let's keep this in mind, too. If you've got Jay Z, and let's just say you ask Michael Jordan to partake of it, to participate, even though rules prohibit you from owning another team in another sport or whatever the case may be, when it comes to the National Football League, I believe that's the case. But then again, I'm not so sure because Kroenke owning the St. Louis Rams didn't stop him from owning the Denver Nuggets. But I, I, I got to do my research on that. The point that I'm trying to make is, what if you could get Michael Jordan involved? What if you, what if, what if you had an ownership group, Ross? How you like this, Ross? What if you had an ownership group that was P. Diddy, Jay-Z, and Beyonce, because she got money, um, Michael Jordan, and Oprah? Would be that unreal. sound bad to you? Be un no, that, it sounds that, phenomenal. That would be phenomenal. I just, want to I just want to slow the pace down because, as you know, Stephen, I'll leave you with this. This is not a world of unicorn and rainbows. You know that. All I'm saying is, they have the money, they have the cachet, they have name recognition, 
And, and, and bottom line is, from a business perspective, how could you deny that they would be an asset to the National Football League? If 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 poor if Jerry Richardson can can have several owners while he owns a forty eight percent stake, why can't Jay Z, P Diddy, Michael Jordan, and Oprah with Beyonce pull it off? Why not? Why not? Sounds good to me. Worth consideration. Eight six six seven two nine three seven seven six eight six six. Say ESPN. I'm just coming up with ideas. So what's on my mind? Chris in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. All right. Uh, um, and you know Chris is get me off a speakerphone, please. Pick up your phone. Pick up your phone. Yeah, maybe someone next week. Okay. I'm sorry. Goodbye. We can't hear you. You're over the National Airways. I can't have that. Let's go to Vinny in Staten Island. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A., how you doing? Um, I'm all right. I just wanted to get your take on something about Eli and the Giants real quick. So. Mm-hmm. All right, so the Giants are almost guaranteed a top three pick, right? So say we take our quarterback of the future. Why not give Eli one more year, see what he's got left, and he could be a mentor to whoever we take and teach him what it's like to be a professional, what it's like to deal with New York and the media instead of just, oh, get rid of Eli, forget everything he's done, draft somebody straight well, out of college on, and throw him to the wolf brakes. behind a horrible pump, offense. Pump the brakes. Why are you acting like people were averse to that? That's that's being considered. I don't know. I just I just hear a lot of people calling in saying, uh, no, you know, no, get rid of Eli, but, but, take, no, no, no. take a quarterback, whoever it is, top three, and Hold I on. just think Eli would be a. Hold on, my man. Did you call up to ask me a question, or do you just want to talk? I'm trying no. to answer your question. I understand your point, but the point they may be making is, what if you can get value for him? What if you can sit up there and and find a team that says, this is a two time Super Bowl champion. We believe grabbing him takes us over the hump. We may be willing to give up a second round pick for him. Why not explore that? I've been here in a fourth round pick and I don't think that's worth it to me, but I just wanted to get your take on that. Thank you very much. Take it easy. I'm saying, listen, if somebody's desperate enough and they're trying to win a championship, you never know what they may entertain. That's what I'm saying. If they think they're knocking on the door, Patrice in the Bronx, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? How are you doing, Steven? Hopefully you can hear me. Thank you for taking my call. Go ahead. I just wanted to speak on uh, Tom, something you went over yesterday about Magic Johnson and uh, Kobe O'Brien being the best player wearing the purple and gold. Um, I want to speak about it because I believe Magic Johnson saw something that a lot of people did not see. Um, every NBA player that comes in the game is comparing himself to the greatest player of all time, which is Michael Jordan, not Bill Russell, not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but Michael Jordan for a reason, um, because he is that guy. Now, it's changed for the Laker Nation. Everybody put on purple and gold is going to compare themselves to Kobe because Kobe is the Laker version of Michael Jordan. Start right there. Start right there. Is Lonzo Ball being compared to Kobe? Or Magic? Magic. Is Kyle Kuzma being compared to Kobe? They compare themselves to Kobe. No, they yeah. don't. That's not true. That's inaccurate. That's patently false. That's not true. But a lot of people compare Magic to LeBron James. Uh, well, no, they don't. They say that LeBron James, the basketball IQ, the ability to pass, the fact that he's so much bigger than the people going up against him makes him comparable. But Magic Johnson was never the athlete and the player that LeBron James was. And LeBron James is just learning how to be the winner that Magic Johnson was. But their skills were not comparable in any stretch, by any stretch. Well, do you That's patently that? false. Well, so that's two believe- false statements that you done made. Keep going. Thank you, thank you. Well, I'm asking now. Do you believe that Kobe deserved to be recognized as that player or in the as what as player? player as the greatest that, that put on the purple and gold? Yes, he deserves to be in the conversation. But I would tell you that Kobe, as an individual talent, may have been the greatest ever. But when I think about Magic, he's the greatest Laker because not only was he a winner, he made the others around him winners. He brought them together. You saw a lot of people playing the role of spectators while Kobe put on shows. With Magic Johnson, everybody was the show.
The only person I see that I was LeBron in my era. Thank you. I really, I would like to take it easy. Thank you. 866-729-3776. 866-ESPN. Your calls to close out the show in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Give Stephen A. a piece of your mind. He is sorry. Call him weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. I mean, just trash. At 866-729-3776. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Make your points quick and succinct, and succinct or I will do it for you. Tony, you're live with Stephen A. Go. Shout out for Winston Salem where you play some college ball. Stephen Thank A., you. right now the Panthers have 25% ownership by two black minorities. African-Americans, I'm sorry. Why not build with that and maybe they can buy because one of them owns Dollar General or Dollar Tree and put some put someone with them. They already I know I'm how not, to, I'm, to I'm, I'm not done. opposed to that, sir. I'm not opposed to that, so I don't think anybody is. We know. We, you know we, I just we, think we, if they add we, on to it, it'd help. All right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disputing what you're saying. We, we were aware that Jerry Richardson owned 48%. Other business owners uh, had a piece of the action. We don't know how much they had. We don't really know all of who they are. Uh, but that's a very valid point in your part. I don't disagree with it, Tony. I think that's a very valid point in your part, and I appreciate I'm it. I'm glad you're a big Black Mamba fan. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. Take it easy. Happy holidays to you and yours. Nick in Long Island, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead. Hey, Stephen A., how you doing? I'm all right. Um, Real quick. Go ahead, buddy. What I wanted to make, uh, everyone's talking about P. Diddy possibly buying a part of the Panthers. No one's really touching about his background, history, his history, though, of his troubles in the past. You think that's something that um, I mentioned him it. from getting in? I mentioned it. I think it potentially could preclude him from getting in. But what I'm saying to you is that uh, we've learned that owners have checkered past too. And it's exactly that. It's the past. And if you're a, a citizen, if you're a contributor to our society, particularly when you have as much money as he has and what have you, particularly in this day and age, why not bring it to the forefront? And remember, the kind of cachet that he brings to the forefront needs to be recognized. Remember, I mentioned him, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Oprah. You know, I, I mean, that's the, you know, to me, that kind of stuff matters. And I think it's wor- it warrants consideration. But thank you for the call. Let's go to Stu in Inglewood, July with Stephen A. What's up, Stu? Hey, right, what's going on, Stephen A., man? I had a question because um, NBA All-Star um, balloting is about to open, and I'm kind of confused on the voting. Um, do you think Lonzo Ball can get voted in strictly by the fan voters, the starters for the NBA All-Star game? Well, he could He could get voted in by the st- by the fans, but that will never happen because it's only the fans in L.A. Nobody would sense outside the streets of L.A. would think about voting him in as an All-Star, let alone a starter. End of discussion. Have a nice day. John in Staten Island, talk to me. Hey, what's up? I was thinking about this draft pick the Giants got. Why don't they trade down? Because they got to pay uh, Justin Pugh. They got to pay OBJ. They can't pay a, a Baker Mayfield that might not even come out. Let's trade down, get an offensive lineman, get a middle linebacker. Let's build. Eli's good for another two years. We haven't even seen this guy uh, quarterback. Or what's his name? I, 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 uh, I, get you know I get where you're coming from, but if – Considering how long Eli has been in the league or what have you, if you have an opportunity to get a quarterback that you're sure can be a franchise caliber quarterback. I'm Jody Avergan. Have you heard of Blue Apron? Well, now you have. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. The country's number one fresh ingredient and recipe service, fresh, high-quality ingredients make the difference, so it's important to know where your food comes from. Plus, it's affordable, easy, and full of surprises. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping. You will love how good it tastes and feels to create home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. Go to blueapron.com slash 30 for 30. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Our number two. The Stephen A. Smith Show here with you. For the next hour over the airways of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 80. By the way, guys, Christmas is coming. This year, go with a win-win. Give us something that will make her feel hot and heat up your holiday. The super warm, world-famous hoodie footy by Pajamagram. Because let's face it, it's hard to be hot 
when she's freezing cold. The Hoodie Footy is the ultimate solution because it combines the warmth of a hoodie with the coziness of a footy pajama. Head to toe warmth means she'll be cozy in no time. You can find all Hoodie Footy styles at pajamagram.com. Each Hoodie Footy has a drawstring hood and a full zip front. Imagine getting to open that, especially if you opt for the sweet and sexy gift set. Includes a hoodie footy and sexy midnight fantasy. Buy both today at pajamagram.com and save $40. You don't have to wrap because every pajamagram includes free gift packing. Christmas delivery is guaranteed as well. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. That's 1-800-GIVE-PJ-APOSTROPHE-S. And by the way, tell them Stephen A. sent you. 866-729-3776. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. Listen, what I'm trying to say to you in regards to the whole Kaepernick thing, the protests were never about disrespecting the American flag and certainly not disrespecting our servicemen and women. Folks tried to turn it into that and the president came in and hijacked the entire issue because he had a personal vendetta to exercise against NFL owners who didn't let him into their good old boys club back in 2014 and his constituency or he, his constituents 